Hi folks, let's talk Fusion 360 Tool Library. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So the Tool Library is phenomenal. It is a great thing to have and it's a great tool, pun intended. Um, there's some weird things about it though that I think are very helpful to walk through. So the Tool Library is accessible with this little folder right here. If you don't see that, make sure you're in this CAM environment. Let's pop it open and take a look. It seems noisy to me. There's a lot of information here, so let's break it down. The most important thing to pay attention to is your options here on the left. So you've got four different uh, menu here. Documents, samples, vendors, and local. What are those? Let's talk about the middle two first. Samples are samples. They're pre-built tools that come in there. Why should you care about them? Great resource to poke through if you wanted to look at, say, a tutorial library or a tool. Um, just some basic defaults you can go poke through to see how other tools have been set up. I don't use them a ton though. Vendors is pretty interesting. Take a look. I guess suspect this will grow in the coming months or years, but look, every Fusion 360 account has Tormach tool libraries built in. And what's amazing is that these, if you see this is where one of the frustrating things, you can't edit this tool here. I'll show you about that in a second. Um, but these actually correlate, well, let here, let's fix that. Copy it. I'll explain this in a second. This corresponds to an actual part number that you can purchase from Tormach or from Meritool for the Albrecht for other companies hopefully in the future, which is great because it's closing that gap of, I bought a specific tool from a specific company. Why am I having to reinvent the wheel every time? So these are great, especially for the lathe. Lathe tooling is a little bit more complicated. Uh, Meritool has a lot of built-in holders. Awesome stuff. Still, I don't use samples and vendors every day. What I do use are the documents and local. So what are those two? Well, documents is a bad name for your file. It's your Fusion 360 files. In this case, it's the file that I have open. Each file that you have open is a separate document. Local are all your local libraries. So right now, my Fusion 360 libraries are only local to the computer I'm working on. There's a cloud option to have your libraries in the cloud. I haven't had a lot of luck with it right now as of what December 2016. I know that's coming and it'll be better. So again, it'll get there. Uh, for you guys that are expert levels, one thing you can do is either, well, we're going to show exporting the library, but you can actually sync your library as a file across something like Dropbox, which is a really cool little hack. Then you do have cloud library. But here's how the library works. You build permanent libraries, which are the ones that are local. So I have Saunders Machine Works Aluminum. So that library exists. Every time I pull a tool up, so let's say I'm in this Fusion 360 demo. This is actually our, uh, I think our card here, Fusion Friday number 33. So I wanted to create, let's say I want to create a new facing operation for this part. I'll click face. I'll go to select the tool right here. And this is where it starts to get a lot of noise. So see how, oh my gosh, I got all this stuff in here. Time out. Let's go fix that. That's ridiculous hit cancel. We go back into my tool library and I'm going to uncheck samples and vendors. Why? I don't want to see them on a daily basis. I want to try to limit the noise. I'm actually going to uncheck local, excuse me, uh, right? uncheck everything now. On a daily basis right now I'm using the VM3 library for the Haas and I'm using Saunders Machine Works Aluminum. Those are the two libraries I use. Close this. So now when we go into 2D face, select a tool. Now all of a sudden, look, a lot less noise. I have three sort of libraries visible. I've got the part file, the tools that are in my part right now. I've got the Saunders Machine Works Aluminum library, and I got my VM3 library. In this case, I want to grab a tool from the permanent library, the Saunders Machine Works Aluminum library. So I'll click say tool 11 and I'll click OK. Actually, you know what? let me pick another one that's not already in this part. Let's just say for the example, I'm going to use a tool 100. So notice right now, tool 100 is in 
my Saunders Machine Works Aluminum Library because that's where I built it and created it. It's not listed in my part file or my document yet. I'm gonna click OK. Click OK. It creates the tool path, great. Let's go take a look at the tool library though. Now, under my file, that, part, that tool 100 now exists in my individual Fusion 360 file. So why is that important? It's important for you guys to understand what happens is you take it from your permanent library and it duplicates it into your local part. That's a good thing. What that means is sort of your permanent library is sacred. You never really use a tool in it. You pull a tool copied out or duplicated out to your local file. Again, here's why. If let's say I wanna change the feed, speed and feeds from this to 1000 RPMs. Where do I do that? Well, there's a bunch of different places. Right click, edit my facing operation. I could change the spindle speed right here. That would only change it for this specific cam operation. That might be okay. What if I said, you know what, I'm gonna run this tool on a bunch of different um, operations in this part and I want everyone to be at uh, 1000 RPMs. Well now I could go to select the tool. I really wish you could edit the tool directly because I have to go to select. Now, which tool do I pick? Well, it's I wanna edit it only for this job, only for this part. My, my master library is sacred. That's the recipe that I normally have and I wanna keep. So instead of say scrolling down to the aluminum library and editing tool 100 here, I'm just going to edit it in the library. So I would right click, edit tool, and here I could go over to feeds and speeds and change it to 1000, 1000, oops, click okay. And you're gonna get this pop-up. It's just gonna say, hey, you changed something. Do you want me to push that change through? In this case, yes, I do. Click yes, click okay, and boom, those changes flowed through. That's great. One of the things I wanna to mention, tool libraries will save your speeds and feeds, sort of. They will save, let's take a look. They will save your RPMs and your cutting feed and your lead and your lead out. But speeds and feeds also includes two other really important things, which is depth of cut and width of cut. Those aren't in this tool library, at least right now. So that's where templates come in. If you haven't learned about templates, you have to. Please, oh my gosh, card here, watch this video. Because templates take your tool library and add in that last bit of the recipe. Amazing. Still need to know the tool library stuff. To create a new tool, again, and this is one of the things I want you guys to take away from this video. If I go into my tool library, I can create the tool in two places. I can create it in the part, or I can create it in my master. If it's a new tool that I'm gonna kind of leave set up in the machine or I'm gonna use a lot, it might make sense to do it in the master. If it's just for this job, try to create it in the part file. Why? Because if you don't, here's what happens. And look at this, this is my library right now. I have this sort of core set of tools, it's like one through 40, and then I got all this junk, all this mess. We're gonna clean that up here in a minute. I'm gonna show you a better way to manage your libraries long-term. So by creating it in the part file, I can click this plus icon right here, and let's say we wanna add a 5 16 end mill. Uh, for some reason, it jumps me to feeds and speeds. That's silly. Let's start with cutter. It would be a flat end mill. Uh, I don't normally even worry about material um, for stuff. Th tools, number of flutes matters. Info right here, that's really more for just you. It's great though to write down, hey, I bought this from Lakeshore or this was a Maritool uh, product number. You could put in date you bought it, but that's not always gonna help. Really, the manufacturer and part number is great. Diameter, 5 16 Shaft diameter for us and me is usually the same as the cutting diameter unless it happens to be a relieved shank tool. Flute length, I'm gonna be honest with you folks, you should put this in there because it is helpful and it can help fusion cam generate uh, collisions or errors if you try to machine deeper than the flute. I normally don't put it in, just being honest. You, sh you, you should though. The nice thing is the colors are helpful here. So flute length shows me what the flute length is Shoulder length. So again, what's the difference between flute and shoulder? Well, you might have a stepped end mill where there's some 
reduced shank that's the same as the flutes, but there's no flutes there. So again, for me, most of the time, I don't worry about this. Body length, body length is what sticks out, which might be different from the overall length because if I have a two inch long end mill, but it's one inch held in the holder, my body length here is only one inch. Speaking of holders, uh, let's add a holder. I have never once used this shaft. Don't even know what it is. Holder, select holder, this is amazing. Select holder, guess what? Your Tormach tools are here. I would hold this in an ER20, click OK, go back to the cutter now, and I'll say, let's say it's a two inch tool, but I only have one inch, which is, I'd like to choke up on it. Perfect. This is awesome because you can see holder collisions. If that holder is going to hit another part of your solid model, definitely great to have holders modeled. Feeds and speeds. On aluminum, I'm going to go 5100. And cutting rate, try to use feed per tooth. Uh, card here to our series on feeds and speeds. But again, as a general rule of thumb, I like to go 0.01 as a starting point. Not much less, sometimes a little more. All depends again on the whole recipe. Uh, I generally don't worry too much about the lead-ins and plunges, again, unless I'm doing, the defaults are okay. Uh, but the feed per tooth is great and it's an input, it's not an output. In other words, you don't have to type 20 or 10 or 15. You can just come over here and type 0 .001, click OK. We've now created that tool and let's see, where was it? 560, oh, I did one mistake. I didn't put in the correct tool number. Right click, edit post-processor tool number is, let's say this would be 33 for me. Make sure, I've never, I had it happen once, sorry, that the length offset and diameter are the same as your number, why? So the way G-code actually works, when it calls up T33, that's tool 33, it doesn't actually apply the height offset. That's really important when it comes to operating PathPilot in any CNC machine. There's another command, H33. So for instance, if you had this as one, for all intents and purposes, you would crash your machine. Again, don't worry about this, it should be fine. Um, I only had it go quirky on me once, but it's a good little sanity check. Comment, this is what shows up in your G-code. So I'm gonna say, um, hello world tool 33, 516. So I'm gonna do something silly, just so you guys can see what it looks like. Click OK, my tool's there. So let's swap out this facing op for that tool 33, edit, select my tool, tool 33, click OK, OK, and let's post just this code. So this is where the comment is really helpful because when you're at the machine, that's what's going to show up right here in your G-code, hello world tool 33, I guess that didn't put the slash in, um, but that can be really really helpful to, to know if you need to do something, you can add a little comment to yourself or a line in there uh, and so forth. Okay, two last things. One, it used to be a nightmare in Fusion if I needed to update this tool number, because what happens is, let's say I've gone and through and tweaked a bunch of feeds and speeds that were specific to this part, which is not uncommon at all. So those speeds and feeds now differ from the main library or even the library for this part because I've gone in here, right here. Remember, when I adjust the feed and speed here, let's say it was chattering, I wanna back it down to 4600. Well, the library instance of this tool is still 5100. I only changed it in the operation. I need to change this tool number for whatever reason it happens. It used to be that that would push through the d default feeds and speeds again, you have to go change them all, not cool. What you can do now is go to your tool library. Let's say I wanna change this to 32. Let's say I fat fingered it. You can right click on tool 33, renumber tools, thank you. Click on it, I'm just gonna type 32, 32, I, this is all okay. Click okay and it's done and it didn't change it, would, it changed the 32 tool here, but it would not have changed this feed if I had adjusted it. Thank you. Last thing, how do you guys maintain a good library? Let's do this the right way. I'm gonna go into my tool library. I'm gonna click the first tool, scroll down, hold down shift, click the last tool. I got all my tools selected. I'm gonna right click, 
copy tool, plural tools. Now pay attention, this is a little bit wonky. I'm gonna click on local. Now I'm gonna come up here and click this plus. I'm gonna do a new library called SMW Tormach ALU Master. New master aluminum library for our Tormach. I'm gonna right click here, paste tool. Now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take the time to clean this up a little. So I know that everything after tool 100 is junk. It's stuff that I got added, it got messy uh, from one-off jobs. I'm gonna click 100, scroll down, hold down shift, click the last tool. So I select all those tools, hit delete on your keyboard. Yes, I'm short. I also know everything between 82 and 51. Those are all junk, hit delete. So now this is a pretty close to my clean library. Now's the time where you do wanna go through, take, take the time and edit these tools. If there's any individual feeds, speed, settings, comments, et cetera, get them locked down. This is your master library. Now here's the important part. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit export tool library. A new folder, say on my desktop, create a, create a new folder for this and I'm gonna say master library fusion 360 backup and i'm going to call it smw master tormach aluminum so let's take a look at what happened i now have this directory on my computer with this dot tools file that is our master library so we're going to share that for anyone who supports our channel on patreon as little as a few bucks a month helps us put out these videos we'll share more of our tool libraries as well coming um but here's the great thing. Inevitably, you are going to contaminate your library. It's just gonna get messy every once in a while. So every month or six months, go ahead into your main library, select the first tool, drag down, last tool, delete everything, wipe it out. It feels good. C click on that library you have right here. It's now empty. Import to a library navigate to your backed up file, double click it, it repopulates that library. This is the way to do it. I don't always practice what I preach. We need to do a better job of this because it really helps us uh, with the efficiency. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Take care. See you next Friday.